So good evening. I wanted to share a couple of highlights from the schools. Uh, before we went on break, before we went on our spring break, the District Festival of Strings concert took place. We also had 10 students um, attend a CODA, which is a co-occurring disorders uh, leadership conference on behalf of the district. Yeah, it was a great learning experience for them. So a couple of things at the high school. Our BRS students, um, again, we, we were over there today, actually, Angela and I ran into each other right <laughs> in front. Uh, two, three, I think three of our first grade classes were on their way out to a field trip. So they're certainly enjoying spring on the different grade levels are having different field trips that they're going on. Another really great project that happened was our fifth graders interview our kindergarten students mm -hmm. and they are the uh, characters mm -hmm. in the fifth grade superhero stories. It's just such a fun experience to see the kindergartners and the fifth graders, they're interviewing each other and, and talking about all different kinds of things. That's so great, um, they're still doing And they kind of just and, hang out on the lawn, like you, they're just and talking, And the fifth graders then writing the little <laughs> book? Yes. They get, yeah, they're still doing that? That's yes, great. they are. That's a great project. Yep, so they did that part. Oh, that's so um, great. They did the interview part, so now yeah, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll work that's on the That's a great writing. project. Yes. Um, our three through eight students, uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week, will take the New York State ELA test. Um, and uh, in big news for the middle school, the middle school science Olympia team, after taking first place in the region, placed fifth in the state last weekend. So uh, really a great experience. Mm -hmm. When Miss Roth- We had a lot of students medal too, right? Mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of accolades to the middle school science olympiad so they'll be at our june okay. awards um, ceremony so um, also at the middle school as you heard miss roth say before today was holocaust remembrance day and i went over to listen to the speaker and we were having some technology issues so I took the opportunity to speak to the class that I was with they have such an amazing understanding and appreciation for the learning experiences that were set up for them um, and really honestly it is an emotionally taxing experience when I came back uh, Donna asked me what's wrong and I'm like I'm 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 exhausted, like emotionally listening to the story. And they had gone through several other experiences that really made them think really hard mm -hmm. um, about a lot of different lessons in life, the value of learning history, mm -hmm. the value of human dignity, um, the value of living, uh, living with loss. Uh, our students have had a lot of different experiences and the day really evoked a lot of emotion. And, you know, I think a lot of us as educators, harnessing emotion and what it teaches you is a really important skill. Like, you never want to think that in all of your learning experiences, you know, we have quadrants of feelings that we learn about and everything doesn't always happen in the happy yellow. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're teaching about some of these past experiences in history, um, you know, when students are learning about World War II, when students are learning about World War I, when students are learning about the Holocaust, you're looking to have this feeling because that is what is gonna stay with them about the learning experience. Sure. They might forget some of those details. And the speaker that we listened to today, she definitely, ha she was a Holocaust survivor and just really the emotion that she brought to the room virtually was so powerful um, and I know that I personally felt it and I know from the students in our discussion they felt it as well um, so just a really nice thank you to the teachers that set up this kind of it's a whole day of different yeah. kind of unique they run a different schedule different learning experiences um, and just a very powerful mm -hmm. way for students to internalize concepts 
and but it's a capstone keep it with of them. the whole program because they learn the Holocaust. It's not just the one day. Oh, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's just Which the Holocaust Remembrance Day is today. And yeah. so today brings to light a lot of different experiential right, it's wonderful. type of experiences that they have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's not a one and done. It's part yeah. of a unit. It's part of the whole unit. Yeah. So district-wide, I'm excited to report that our intercoms have come in and we have started wiring for them this week. So as soon as they are all uh, put in and operational, I'll be rolling out the work from months ago that we did with the Visitor Protocol Safety Task Force. So I know my people are probably wondering where we've been. They're here, they're getting installed. Once they're operational, we'll bring back all of that work. If you recall, in the Visitor Protocol Safety Task Force, community members, staff members, administration, all met together to come up with how are we going to implement this new system? Where are gonna be the new visitor protocols in all three of our buildings and the special education office and in district office? So there's five like main offices where people are coming into mm -hmm. uh, district buildings. So I'm excited to dust those off and bring them in hopefully It'll take a week or two to come, you know, to get everything working, and we'll be rolling that out. And uh, speaking of safety, I thought it would be helpful uh, for me to host a community safety forum. I not only I think is it timely in light of the high school lockdown on March 30th, um, but you know it's been the district goal this year, and we've made many strides. Um, that I am very happy to share with the community. I've discussed safety. I think at probably every single board meeting, you guys have, have heard enough um, of it. Um, but we've also had, you know, as I mentioned, the, the visitor protocols, we also had the reunification safety task force that we ran this year. Um, it's been a topic for several PVIL press notes that I've written. Um, it was the winter district newsletter front page and I think that having the experience of the lockdown in the community just kind of helps put all of the practices that we've put together kind of like in a package. It allows the community to express their ideas and their thoughts. And so I'm working on planning um, a safety forum. So more to come on that. Um, again, I just think it's an opportunity to engage on the topic in a different way. Um, so as soon as a date is determined, I will certainly let the community know. That is the end of my report. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.